What's up everyone and welcome to another Rust electrical tutorial. I'm Austin and today I'm going to be covering how to wire like a pro five useful tips. Now this video is geared toward those who are new to Rust or at least new to the electrical side of Rust uh, or maybe those looking to up their game a bit. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, root power, tip number one. Uh, it just simply refers to the available power sources in Rust of which there are three. We have the generators, we have uh, solar panels, and we have the wind turbines. Uh, and in many cases, you're going to need to use these together. And what I mean by that is just by having a single output uh, coming out here for the battery. Uh, you know, one solar panel can put out a maximum of 20 Rust watts in the best, um, you know, the best scenario. Uh, and then a wind turbine can put out anywhere between zero and 150 rust watts uh, and the generator puts out a constant 40 rust watts when it's running and can hold up to 500 uh, units of fuel uh, and so when you're using this you can use them by themselves you can use them together but if you're going to use them together which is going to be the most common thing you need um, you need to know how many root combiners that's what this red switch is here the root combiner literally does as the name states it combines root power sources um, and it is limited to give or take hooking up to and out of root power sources uh, which you'll discover as you as you play with it uh, but basically in order depending on how many root power sources you have you're going to need x amount of root combiners to 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 hook to them and so to do that you need a, basically a very simple way to do it is to use this equation uh, which is the total number of root power sources so in this case i have six i've got one turbine I've got four solar panels, that's five, and then one uh, generator, that's six. So I have six root power sources. So the total number of root power sources minus one gives you the number of root combiners you need. So six minus one in this case is five. So I have five root combiners here. And what I've done is I've sort of uh, stacked them like a tree where all the bottom ones are the inputs. Here's my six, the blue line here is the wind turbine. These uh, four green lines are the, are the solar panels. And then this purple line here is the generator and so once you have that you simply just start daisy chaining them up like this so this one's connecting these two this one is connecting just this one and then its output here is going out here this one is connected to this one here to end up with a single output so the goal of the root combiners is you end up with a single output that you can send to a battery or some sort of power distribution setup to multiple batteries whatever you want uh, but that is the simple and straightforward way to do root power all right, so the next thing we're gonna do is wiring, and this is just general wiring tips. Um, you know, this is kind of self-explanatory. This is gonna be from a PC perspective, obviously, but uh, you know, left click, you can attach a wire and then you, as you, you can left click it onto stuff. Um, that's how you connect it to disconnect something that you've, you know, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll continue it on. So let's say I do this horrible wiring run here and I run into this light. So there we go, I've connected here to this light in this hilarious path. I can hold right click on it and remove the wire. Um, I can also, you know, clip the wire like I was doing. So if I come up and I can just be left clicking it how, however I want it hooked up. Um, this way you can, if you connect it somewhere accidentally you don't want, you can tap right click and it will unclip it from the wall. This doesn't always work. So here I am doing it, it's not working, it finally works. So sometimes you have to kind of look around, back up, uh, keep tapping it until it unclicks, but it will do it. If you hold it, it will just delete the wire entirely. Um, next thing we're gonna talk about is connection point indicators. Every switch or item that you're connecting to has these connection point indicators or you know that, that light up. Uh, and so when you have nothing equipped, if you have the wire tool here, which I guess I should state, you need a wire tool to do this. But if you have the wire tool, it'll highlight where you can connect wires to. Once you select something, so I'm gonna select this branch out, you know, note that this light has a pass through and a power in. If I select this branch out, this is an output the pass through on this light no longer illuminates because you can't hook an output to an output. It'll only allow you to hook to inputs and therefore uh, the, only, the only connection points that are going to illuminate are those that are available to what you have hooked up to. So, so in this case, it's just the power in because the power out, which I now can highlight because I have no wire, uh, was not an option. So if I were to then hook to this power in, uh, I can technically hook it to itself for no reason, but this is an input, this is a pass through that this can hook to. So uh, just understand that the, the connection point indicators are there to help you. So if you don't see something show up, it's because whatever you're hooked to cannot connect to that item that you originally thought you might be able to hook to. Uh, so changing wire colors is uh, actually very, it's not necessary, but it's fun. So let's say I were, well, I guess first we'll say, if you just hold R with the wire tool equipped, on the PC, you get this this uh, color wheel. You can select any any one you want by uh, left clicking the color you want, and then once you 
have collected the color, that color will now be active and we can use with your with your wires. You can also, if you want, change an existing wire color that is already placed. And all you have to do there is select, have whatever color you want. So we'll say this pink color if I left click to select that. And then as long as I'm on the, you don't even have to select the wire. It can be any wire, all wires. As long as you're highlighted on the wire, one of the connection points of the wire that you're using, you just tap R, it will change the color to that wire. And you can do that uh, as many times as you want. So that's a useful, a useful uh, trick. Uh, the last thing we're going to talk to uh, talk about really quick is terminal versus pass through. And all I mean by that is that some switches are a terminal switch or item and some are a pass through. So these lights represent our example of a pass through, meaning that on one side of it, it has an, an output and that output will pass through power. And so I can hook that up to other things. And like this one here can, you know, run over here uh, to this other light. I have to change this a little bit to accommodate that, but there you go. I've you know hooked this up through through properties of pass through. Uh, some items you know and, and pass through extends to to switches. So if I were to run power to this switch here, that's the input. It's output. This is a pass through switch. I can then run this up to here and then hook up these lights, which they have a power in and they have a pass through. So I can pass through this to the power in here. Notice that the only thing that illuminates on the next one is what's available. So in this case, I know there's two, but only power and illuminates that we talked about. There we go. And so these are what you would call pass through items. And so now if I turn on this switch, I've got these lights. If I adjust this to be the correct, so we've got what? One, two, three, four. So two, four, six, uh, seven rust bot requirement there. I'll set this to seven. Uh, we've got our lights and so that is a pass-through item and, and an example of an item that is not pass-through technically uh, in a way is the turret in that if I run let's change the color for fun if I run this line over to the turret here uh, it's only going to illuminate there are three over here but it's I'm, I have an output here so it can only take an input if I run this over to this turret and then I've got turret takes 10 this takes one so I'm gonna set this to 11 uh, this turret doesn't have a pass through in that it won't pass. It has these reference outputs, but they'll only output one rust watt, uh, period, because they are for, they're like a reference output, but you can't say send. If I were to send, you know, 40 rust watts through this switch and turn this on, uh, this is not going to pass what's left over of that 40. It's only ever going to put out one because these are a reference. So understand that there are things that might pass through, like for instance, the HBHF sensor, um, it passes through one, but it'll pass through more depending on how many players it detects. So that's a very specialized item. Uh, but understand that there are such things as terminal versus pass through. Most of the switches are gonna be pass through because they have a design to do something. Um, but you'll know because they will be, in this case, you know, a power in and a power out or a pass through. However, it's labeled. So we have a pass through here. Uh, and that is the tips on wiring. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the short circuit max depth. Um, this really only applies to the root combiners uh, in that there is a limit to how many of these you can connect linearly, meaning like the output of one goes to the input of the next one, its output goes to a whole new one, so forth and so forth, You know, not utilizing the two in the bottom, just a linear fashion. You can hook up 15 of these before it's gonna give you this max depth uh, combined power out problem. And what it's doing is just saying short circuit, you can't go any farther than this. So we have the hundred that I sent here that made it all the way down the chain, except for we have nothing here because we're at short circuit max depths. So that only applies to the root combiner when you hook it up this way. This does not apply when you hook it up this way. And I'm gonna show you an example of what I mean by that. Uh, but if you hook them up in a linear fashion, you will after the 15th one get a short circuit max depth. Um, and the reason that people do this is either they're hooking up root power sources and they hook it up this way, which is the way you don't want to hook it up for a root power source, um, or they're trying to extend a line a really long way. So you can extend these. Basically, if you hook up a line, so I'll hook one onto this uh, branch here, you can go uh, 30 meters with a line. You can see it'll end right there at that, at this, uh, this foundation. So basically you can go 10 foundations approximately before the line has to be extended. And the way you can extend them is you can use a uh, root combiner, assuming that you haven't hooked up things that won't hook to root combiner. So let's say you have a, a, a turbine that's really far away in your base. You can, if you're trying to hook something up, I could say, grab some root combiners and I could put a root combiner like, you know, way out here somewhere like this. And I could then connect a root combiner um, all the way out here to this root combiner before I run out of, of line. There we go. And then now I can go, 
you know, even farther. So that's the reason people would do it. Um, you would have to be putting a, a turbine really far away. But for whatever reason, if you run into this problem where it says short circuit max depth, that's the reason. And again, it doesn't apply to things like the branch switch and just, you know, I hooked up 16 of them or 32 of them here for no reason. You run out of power by the time you get here, basically. But um, it does not, I'm not having a short circuit max depth here. It applies to the root combiners. So, and when I said linearly, I meant, you know, from one to the other, one to the other, one to the other. To illustrate this, if you look at this, monstrosity here um, I have hooked up eight rows and I was actually gonna hook up all 15 rows but that would have been so huge uh, and not worth it and I used a bunch of test generators to prove a point here is that this if you follow this uh, blue line here this is that this is the linear line you can have up to 15 rows this being the first row second row third row so forth and you know hooking up as many root power sources as you want i currently have 25,600 rust watts coming out of here just to point out that that it's not that you can't hook up a bajillion you know more root power than you would ever ever hook up for any reason uh it's not it's not that it's how you hook up the root combiner so this max depth issue isn't related to how many root combiners you have it's related to how they're built. So in this case, all I did was it's just a ever, it's a, you know, um, a root, a power, a base two to the power situation where I have, you know, one here and then it's two or I have two coming in here beneath these have four and then beneath these have, you know, two, four, six, eight, and then just keeps growing, 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 growing. Uh, so again, it's not about how many root power sources or root combiners you want, it's how you hook it up. So if you do the tree method like this, you're not gonna run into that max power depth until you have a, a, you, over 15 rows, which you know is more root power sources than I think anyone's probably ever done in the history of this game, period. So uh, that is the max depth situation. Uh, the next thing we're gonna talk about is the branch switch. This is hands down one of the most powerful switches in the game. This is something that you really, really need to understand when you're doing rust power. Um, and so it really is set up again, as the name suggests that it's like a tree. Um, the branch out, which is the, uh, which is the right side here. We have, or I'm sorry, the left side here is the branch out and we have the power out. This is the two outputs. We have one input on the switch, one, uh, two outputs, a branch out and a power out. The power out is like the trunk of a tree. Um, this is where you have your flow of power, all your stuff from your battery or power sources coming through here. And the branch out is stuff that you're sending off. Maybe this is lights, maybe this is uh, turrets, maybe this is, you know, I don't know, uh, industrial stuff, whatever. Um, and you can think of it like a tree. So here I have this set up similar to the picture where I've got branch, which is this is the trunk, this power out is this, the trunk of the tree and it's just building up as it goes. And then every so often I'm, I'm taking some off. So I set this branch to 11 that's, and that's the point you can, you can partition off a specific amount of the from the, the you know the, the the trunk of the tree if you will to an item so here I have for turrets I sent I sent 11 off you know so 10 for the turret one for the switch going this way and now I have of my hundred that's arriving uh, down here I took 11 here I used one for this and now I have 88 left in the trunk of the tree this goes on to the next branch um, its branch out is saying what is this 25 so I did this was just stuff this is just like 25 rust watts worth of crap in your base that you want to power uh, and then whatever you have left after you've done that comes out of this power out continues with i got 62 rust watts here arriving this next one and i set this to 15 this is for industrial stuff going on um, and then you know beyond that i've got what 46 left it keeps going and then i partitioned off 13 here for lights and then i still have uh left over i still have 32 rust watts in the trunk of the tree for other stuff so you can see the idea here is that the branch switch allows you to uh, you really partition off power and maximize the usage of the power that you have uh, for whatever items uh, that you want to use in your base. Uh, the last tip here is batteries. This is hands down, I think for early players, one of the, the things that gets people the most and most commonly the problem is your battery keeps dying. And so why is that? Uh, and that's because you need to know how much power you have coming in based on what you're using. And so the amount of power that you need for your battery charging, um, if you're not just giving it everything you could possibly want, is gonna be based on the active usage. So if you look at this battery here, it gives you a little info that pops up and it says that the active usage is two currently. And that's because I've hooked this battery over to this branch here for the large battery branch and it's currently set to two. 
um, watch my branch video. Uh, I think I called it the branch is lying to you because it does a special, has a special relationship with batteries. But really what you need to understand is whatever this branch out is set to, the minimum is two. Um, that's gonna be the active usage on your battery. And it is a hierarchy. So let's say I have another branch hooked to this uh, beyond this branch, but this one's set to 20. It's gonna, it's gonna register the closest branch to it and no other branch after that branch. So not any other branches, but any other branch after another branch out will not be considered uh, in the active usage. So in this one, I've got two setups. Let's say I change this to uh, 10 and uh, now it says an active usage of 10. And so what does that mean? That just means that's the load on the battery. And so whatever your input is here, currently I have 164. This one's got, you know, this is coming from the, I've got one uh, solar panel and I've got the, the wind turbine hooked up to this particular battery. Uh, and so in order to know how much root power you need flowing into a battery, you, you could always just go with the default. You know, a large battery can put out a maximum of 100 rest watts. So if you want to guarantee that it'll never die, assuming that you end up using all active usage. So if I were to go over here and set this to 99, because uh, this is going to use one anyway, if it's the 99, oh, that's 99, that's right, I'd set this to 100. Whoops, there we go, so that's to 100. And so now it'll say 100 active usage. This is the max it can put out. Is a, so you're using the whole battery, which means um, you need to take whatever your active usage is and, and use this equation. So the active usage divided by 0 0.8 is gonna give you the minimum charge. So like I was saying, if you wanna set your battery up to be capable of using all 100 rust watts on a large battery, 100 divided by 0 0.8 gives you 125. So that's the balance amount is that you would need a minimum of 125. Really, you need 126 or more so that you're always slightly trickle charging. And when I say 126 or more, I mean on average, because this this uh, wind turbine is going to fluctuate to 131 now. It might be 80 later. It could be 50 later. It could be, you know, whatever. Um, you need to just make sure that on average, you're supplying at least 126 rust watts to this battery uh, to keep a charge. Otherwise, if you don't want to do that, you know, this one's 50 is its max output. So this one would be 50 divided by 0 0.8 is I think 62.5. So you'd have to have 63 or more. Um, the small battery is 10 is its max output. So it'd be 10 divided by 0.8 is 12.5. So you'd have to have 13 or more. So you could just do that if you want, give them the, you know, everything they could ever possibly need. And then you'll never have a problem or situationally, let's say you have, let's say this is 50. Right, so th let's say you have 50, 50 rust watts worth of stuff hooked to this branch, you know, you know, turrets, lights, whatever. You got 50 rust watts coming out of here. Um, and so the active usage on the battery is 50. You can take this particular active usage here, 50, divide it by 0 0.8, that's gonna give you 62.5. So right now, this battery as it stands now with its active usage currently is gonna need 63 uh, coming into it here minimum to keep it from draining. And so that's, you can situationally choose, you know, what, you know, what you're charging, uh, depending on what you have hooked up to the battery. So and this could be useful, say, let's say you, you have a large battery, but maybe you only have two solar panels currently. So you only have a max of 40. So you'd want to restrict this to less than 40. You know, you'd want to restrict this to maybe like 25, 30 rust watts of stuff hooked up to it until you have more root power. And you can do those calculations very simply by dividing the active usage by 0.8 to give you what you're gonna minimum you're gonna need, you know, else you uh, discharge your battery prematurely. Uh, so, so that can be a little a little confusing, but you know, it, it, the, the takeaway here is take your active usage divided by 0.8, add at least one to that, and that's the minimum you need for that particular amount of power use you have going on. Or on the flip side, if you have plenty of root power, you know you have enough root power, just make sure that on average. You know, this one 100 divided by 0.8 is 125. So 126 for the large batteries minimum. Uh, 50 divided by 0.8 is 62.5. So 63 or more. And then 12.5, 10 or uh, 13 or more. You can just do that even if you're not using all that active usage to guarantee that as your base grows, as the items that you hook up grow, uh, you know that they have the right amount of power. So this one can be a little complicated, uh, but with a little practice, uh, you know, it's it's not it's not too bad. Uh, so that, folks, is just about all I. I've got. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below. Otherwise, you can get me on my Discord. See you later.